check. Checkmate. Hello, Buck and Island. This is Moon Rocket One. Is there any further news yet? Over. Not yet, Ian. There's been nothing since Professor Wedgwood left MR2. Over. But you must hear from them soon. They can only carry enough oxygen for four hours. Over. Well, we'll let you know the moment they come through. Over. Oh, don't worry. I won't run away. Over. And out. I can't understand why we haven't heard. You know, Old Wedgwood may have misjudged the significance of those symbols. I can't see Professor Wedgwood misjudging anything, Mr. Kennedy. I'm more worried at not hearing from Henderson. He should have been back in MR2 ages ago. Now, take it easy, Henderson. I'm just going to step up the pressure a little bit more. Thanks, Wedgwood. You made it just in time. Good. You'll be all right now. Are you all right, Hilary? Yes, thank you, Dr. O'Connell. How did you find it? Well, those signs on the rocks, they led us right to the edge of your crater, to within radio range of your transmitter, and then we picked up your footprints. But how did you open the doors? Your father found a hand-operated lever outside there, and, and, and it still worked. Those signs on the rocks, they all point to this place. Must be a center for something, or a base. What do you think, Dad? Yeah, it's a base, all right. Look at this. What is it? It's a spaceship, like the one we saw in orbit. And looks perfectly preserved. I wonder how long that's been here. That's one of the things we've got to find out. Whoever lived in here managed to make this place airtight. Look at these doors. Two pairs of them. Call me an airlock. But how did you manage to get in here? Well, it's a sort of shaft at the end of the cave. We were up top looking for you, and Jimmy slipped down it. And I didn't think it was designed for entry. It was more like an exhaust shaft, wasn't it, Mr. Henry? Yeah. Well, if this place was airtight once, we could make it airtight again. You mean we could live in here? Hunter could take off his spacesuit? That's right, Jimmy. Come on, let's un start unloading the supply rocket. This is going to be our first real base on the moon. Ah. Rocket ah. One, this is Buckin Island. Professor Wedgwood's just come through. They found Henderson and the children and they're setting up a base. Over. That's great news, Jean. Can you give me their exact location? Over. Professor Wedgwood's in MR2 now. I'll just put you through on relay. Jean, the press are on again. They want to know if there's any news from Professor Wedgwood's party. Yes, there is. He took down this statement from the professor himself. My, this is fantastic. 5 p.m. terrestrial time. We have now established a semi-permanent base in the Sea of Showers, in a cave set deep in the rocky edge of a crater. It is clear to us that this cave has been inhabited before. Jean, are you sure this is from Wedgwood, not from one of the children? I should get that off to London straight away, Mr. Field. <laughs> Air pressure is constant now. Huh? Uh, it's wonderful to be able to breathe in here without these things. Even more wonderful that those doors on the airlock still perfect condition. Well, Mary, we'll start by photographing and tabulating everything in this cave. And we'll try to find out what it all means. Come on, Hamlet. You don't need your spacesuit now. Dad's filled the cave with air. There's some tin milk here, which I brought from the rocket. Dr. O'Connell, come over here. Yes. We found some more carvings. <coughs> This is the same, isn't it? The same writing. If it is writing. Oh, yes, yes, it's writing, all right. And it looks to me as if those are two fresh symbols, making 13 in all so far. Well, that's very primitive, isn't it? I mean, we've got 26 letters. Well, first of all, Jeff, we don't know that they are letters. And 
Secondly, it doesn't follow that the small number of symbols in indicates a primitive mind. It could be more advanced, much more. Now, we do know that the people who carved those symbols were very clever at making things. Look at that spaceship. Don't have a look at this, John. There's some more markings on the spaceship. See there? Over there? This is most interesting. And always the same symbols. Never less than three in a group. And in all, 13 marks so far. Wait, Lord. Hmm? What do you make of this spaceship? I mean, how do you think it worked? Well, it certainly wasn't powered by chemical fuels. No fuel nozzle. But around the back of the ship, there's a highly insulated grill. An insulated grill? Well, that could mean they emitted electrical particles. Exactly. A tremendous velocity. The iron drive. What scientists have always dreamed of using, yet never been able to achieve. Did you say iron, Daddy? No. I-O-N. What we call the ionization of electrical particles, to make them travel in one direction. What drove them? What was the power unit? Atomic power. It couldn't have been anything else. That ship was atomic powered. It could have traveled from anywhere in the universe. So Dr. O'Connor was right. Scientifically, they are more advanced than we are. We'd know just how more advanced if only we could get inside. But the thing seems completely sealed. Well, what about cutting tools, Professor? I mean, we could open up a hole in the side. Oh, it would be a terrible shame. It's so beautifully made. But they must have been able to open that hatch. Dad, look! What is it, Jimmy? Water? Water? Where'd it come from? It fell on me. Some fell in Hamlet's milk. <laughs> It's amazing. Water on the moon. But why not? It's quite possible there's a layer of ice under the surface of the moon. Isn't that so, Mary? I've always held to that theory, yes. And the warm air we've introduced in here could have melted it. We must take a sample of this. But isn't the water the same? No. Now, this little drop of water can tell us a tremendous about, um, amount about the mineral deposits on the moon. Let's put it under the microscope. Stay here, Hamlet. I'm going to see if this water's all right for you to drink. It's no good, Hamlet. I can't see her. Hamlet, where are you? I told you to stay where you were. Hamlet, come back. You don't know what's down there. You take a look, where, Jude. been contaminated. Exactly. And I don't believe it's indigenous to the moon. That water was brought here from somewhere else. It condensed on the roof of the cave and froze. With us here, it's melting. So now we know these people also brought water with them. Well, if these creatures drank this water, they were very strange. It's radioactive. What? Yeah, listen to this Geiger count. Jack, Jimmy had some of that water on his hand. Where is he? I know, he was here a minute ago. Daddy, Jimmy touched that water. Now, don't worry, Mary. It won't hurt him. It's only very slight. But let's try over by the spaceship. Jeff? Where is Jimmy? I don't know. He's probably hiding somewhere. Well, help me look for him. He'll be all right. He can't get out of here anyway.
Hamlet. There you are. Don't wander off again. Come on, you'll catch cold down here. Jimmy, if you don't answer me this time, I'm going back. <laughs> <laughs> 